I'm Greg Mahoney with Building Code Education and this is the second in a series of inspection videos. Today we're going to be looking at a residential electrical panel and um, as you approach the panel um, this isn't a change out but we're going to we're going to treat it as it, as if it was so we're going to you want to be aware of whether or not the meter set and um, the most important thing when we're looking at a panel is safety so you want to be aware of whether or not there is there's power or the panel is energized and you shouldn't assume that just because the meter's not set that it's not energized. An uh, um, inspector that I worked with at one point, one time, he um, was reviewing a panel and um, the contractor or someone on the job site had actually put nails across the meter socket so it was energized even though there was no meter there. So you always want to be aware of whether or not your um, panel is energized. Simple tool like this could let you know you can hear it when it beeps like that. That means there's power to it. So we're going to go ahead and um, take the dead front off. Actually, before we start, um, on electrical panels, there'll be information on the door. And this will tell you which type of circuit breakers are compatible with this panel. It'll also give you some other information about um, how many ground wires can be um, connected to one lug and things like that. So a lot of information, short circuit rating. Um, as you take the dead front off, you want to be careful um, with the screws because um, you want to make sure you don't lose them. Sometimes when you're around landscaping, it's easy to lose the screws. And you want to be very careful when you're removing a dead front if, there's, if it's energized, because there are live parts behind here. So we slide that out like that, and we expose the internal buses. Now these metal parts are energized, so we're going to be really careful about that. We can see in here, we're looking at the um, grounding conductor. This goes to the grounding electrode down below. Went ahead and pulled that off, and part of your inspection should be to actually determine whether or not that connection is tight. So we, that's good. We'll put that back on later. Um, another um, connection we want to ensure is a bonding connection here to the, the gas pipe. So that one, also we can verify that that is tight. And that one's good. So we have the panel open now and we first take a look at the general appearance and again uh, be aware that um, we have a meter set here so these parts are energized and we should always treat the panel as if it was live anyway because we don't always know whether it's energized or not. Um, so one of the things you want to make sure is that the um, neutral and the ground um, grounding conductors are tied together. We have two buses um, grounding and neutral buses on each side, one on each side. You can see that they are grounded with a bar that goes across. These lugs down here, again, these parts are going to be energized if there's a meter set. Um, want to go ahead and make sure that there aren't more than one um, conductor landed on, on an individual lug. Um, want to make sure that it's done in a workmanlike manner. The code says neat in a workmanlike manner. Um, we want to, if we have any aluminum conductors, we can see right up here we have an aluminum conductor. Aluminum conductors require a product called, um, or antioxidant, or um, oxidation inhibitor. This is called NOOx. Um, that's coated on the conductor in, b when it's landed on the lug. Um, take a look at the, the conductor size compared to the, and determine whether it's com um, compatible with the circuit breaker size. So typically a 14 gauge wire is going to go on, land on a 15. Um, amp breaker, 12 gauge on a 20 amp breaker. Um, these uh, two pole breakers, there are devices that we can see have been installed here. Um, what we don't want to see is a piece of wire or, or a piece of nail tying those two together. Um, and if, if you're comfortable, you can go ahead and check the tightness of the, um, con the grounding conductors and things like that. Um, but typically what we're doing is just looking to make sure that it's all been installed per the code, per the listing on the, um, the manufacturer. And again, there's, there's lots of information on the panel. Um, specifically, we can find out information as to whether um, our breakers are, are compatible with this panel and also if we're able to land more than one conductor on the grounding bus. Um, this panel looks okay. I think I would, um, I don't see any problems with it, maybe clean up the wood shavings that are in here, but other than that, we look good. All right, and last thing, and we don't see one in this panel, but if you have a loose conductor that's not landed on a lug, uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that they have a wire knot on there, even if the um, circuit's not being used. 
And then finally, um, as you put it, make sure you put it all back together with all the screws and, and tighten that all up, uh, the dead front and the um, cover for the um, grounding con connection as well. So uh, that'll be it for today. If you like our videos, uh, su subscribe on our YouTube channel and uh, check us out, uh, buildingcodeed.com. We're going to be, we have some other free content that's available on our website.